This is why I like save game editors for GTA 5. You can recreate some of your favorite cars in 4, and depending on if the car was buffed or nerfed for 5, the Sabre GT, for example, was buffed for GTA 5. Trying to fix this. Thing. Now, you may remember this car from Stevie Steps, the green on green Sabre GT. I can't get the exact shade. This is closer than what it was before. Custom license plate. And thanks to slidey cars, I get decently realistic handling. You know, there's only really one way to see just how good this car drives, and just to go out and drive it. But as you see, unlike the Sabre GT and GTA 4, this thing is very quick. It's a little slow to launch. I'll show you what I mean about launching it. Took, if you just do this and gun it. Well, that was actually from a roll. Let me just make it a better example. Doesn't seem like it's any less maneuverable. More of a bias towards oversteer. But it's still a good driving car, and you can and you need to be able to do quick maneuvers and duck and weave and all sorts of crazy things at high speed. I'm actually not even going that fast. See how you can just power and do a 180? Incredible. This is even with the upgraded tires, too. This thing was even stupider before. It was, it was inconveniently oversteer. Alright, I'll give an example here. This is how you not. This is how you don't launch a Sabre GT. Way too much wheel spin. I spun them all the way through first. Now here's here's how you launch one. Notice that's a lot quicker. I don't have an in-game speedometer to confirm, but you know, if you look at the corners of the screen and see how fast things are passing, yeah, rolling onto the power is better. <laughs> just kidding. See this car, just like in GTA 4, it drives smaller than it is, and it can get in and get out of difficult situations. I mean, like GTA 4, though, it doesn't have the best ground clearance. But I actually really like driving this car. This is actually my top three. It's up there with the Crown Victorias, which are amazing. Those cars, are, I would argue, receive buffs in GTA 5. Because even bone stock, they're very, very good. This car, even bone stock is not terrible. Yeah, I, I just need a shade of green, maybe one shade darker than this. Because I have the, the center stripe, that's pretty dead nuts accurate. But the problem before is, was the, the green that you get from the Los Santos Custom, that, that's one shade too dark. Now this is one shade too light, but at night it looks better, so fuck it. Ah, just kidding. Back up. See, this car, it's its definitely harder to drive quickly than the GTA 4 version. You know, this reminds me more of the Faction, because the Faction is a frisky car, and really the only thing limiting what it can do is what you can do as a driver. Whereas in GTA 4, the Sabre GT, it limits you with what maneuvers you can pull. It's too slow, it's got a little too much understeer. This has a lot of oversteer, but it's, it's manageable if you're smart. You know, and it would probably be a little bit less oversteery if I didn't have the level 4 transmission, level 4 engine, and the turbo. But, well, the turbo, the, the Sabre turbo decals don't make any sense. And, well, you know, I just want to go fast all the time, so... Yeah, you know what? Good enough. If it falls down, it falls down. Now, you're about to see some fun driving in a car that I really like. A car that you may remember from GTA 4. I tried to recreate... Uh, yeah, the shade of green is definitely one shade too light, but it's, it's closer than what it was. Stevie's car theft Sabre GT. Very nice car. This is the road I take all my cars on that I like. This car does really, really well here. Yeah, that that turn th this turn is very, very tight. I enjoy it. It's a decrease. It's actually that's not even the tightest turn here though. This it's a uh, de slightly decreasing radius turn. Here we go. It's a little annoying having to deal with traffic here, but I mean, that's what happens when you drive it. Yeah. Still, I really enjoyed this road. 
I mean, going uphill, it's more about your power because you get some gravity assist with the brakes. Likewise, going down, you have to use your brakes more because you get gravity assisted acceleration. This is this is kind of reminds me of some of the roads that I really like to drive my Grand Mark on. <laughs> I'm on the gas a lot going up the hill. I mean, it's not that this car is slow, but this, there's a pretty big grade to this hill. You don't realize it. But we are steadily going up. Banking. Failed by the Regina. We're not even done. This road goes on for fucking ever. I love this road. I think this is called the uh, Bantam Can Canyon Road or something. Telling me to eat shit when you're trying to hoot an Infinity FX 45. Let's see, this is just a fun car. It, it's, a, it's definitely a bit of a wild ride because it always wants to kick its tail out, but. Yeah, this is the other half of the road. Yep, it's Banham Canyon. Yeah, Banham Canyon Road. There's two parts to this road. I just did one half of it. This is the next half. It's a little bit more open over here. Oh, and Furnace. Nice. Yeah, and Furnace got a buff in five. Not a huge one. Because it, it, it's still very weak and it has terrible, terrible ground clearance, but it's very fast. And it's like a lot of the cars in five with slidey cars. The all wheel drive cars in this game are extremely fast, even when they're going stock. Okay. No, you won't. Hey, here's one of the turnarounds up here. See what I mean with the Sabre GT though? It's a, it's a very fun car. It still has that sharp handling, but it's not too sharp. I mean, th th this car is it's closer to a faction than a Sabre GT if you're comparing it to GTA 4 cars. This is much closer to a faction. This car's a fucking animal. Understeer! Yep, there you go. That's how you start with you enter your slide way too early. And you correct it and then it just kind of goes straight. There isn't a lot of understeer in this car, and it usually happens if you're just being a moron. So, I mean, it's not, the faction has less understeer, but I don't know. I, I, I do see a lot of similar. Well, Jesus Christ, he's even more reckless than I am. Holy cunt. I think I wasn't even trying to stay in this. And then he just paused right into me. Anyway. So it's always kind of a fun challenge trying to stay on your side of the road. Because it forces, it makes the road that much tighter. Let's make a cut through here. Uh-oh! Oh, I don't think he liked that very much. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I'd, I'd feel that way if I was trying to do an SUV like that. Because even the FX45 with its car underpinnings, it's still never going to be as agile as, say, a Sabre GT. This is why I play five, because you can drive a car like this, you can have a lot of fun. You just have to know how to do it. I mean, slidey cars is, is the reason why I continue to play this game. If it wasn't for slidey cars, this game would have been uninstalled for the umpteenth time and it would have stayed that way. But the customization of the cars, plus how you can you know, actually have some fun. I mean, apparently one developer at Rockstar cared about the people that liked the GTA 4 style handling that had things like longer stopping distances. Understeer, oversteer, wheel spin, big drifts, depending on the car, of course. Yeah, this tur that turn's really tight. Actually, that was kind of a cut. That's a very sharp turn. That that's the sharpest turn on the road right there. I mean, this whole road's fun, though. Who are we kidding? See, I'm on the brakes a lot more here. I, mean, I do go full throttle a decent amount, especially when I do like that. You got it. No, you don't. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, there's no shame in using the banking on the side of the road here. Boing. Oh, I'm surprised those weren't solid. Those posts, if they're yellow, they're usually solid, but it's hard to tell if it's yellow or if it's wood. Uh-oh. That's the police! Go. There we go. Yeah, that'll get your pulse going a little bit. Yeah, it's getting a little hot. And there you go. Buen Vino and Bantam Canyon Road. It, this is this is a good place to be. Actually, you can, you can go down a little bit further even, but I just go up and down here. And then go all the way back. It's a great road. If you really want to know how your car does at low speed and some a couple medium speed turns, you will get a very clear picture after driving that road. You also have a lot of fun. I mean, with a car like this, I mean, how, how can you go wrong with a car like this? I mean, seriously. So, I'll have to decide where exactly this car sits on my top ten list, but I have a feeling it's going to be in the top three, because there are very few cars that I drive that will let you do what this car does. The only real issue it has is a lack of ground clearance. As you can see, it's, it's not very good, especially in the front. And that's a problem because the front of your car is usually what hits the, the vertical obstacle first. Other than that, it's a really, really fun car. I have more fun with it than I should, honestly. Undercarriage.